Throughout Cyberpunk 2077, we come face to face with some of its rare living legends. Rogue Amendieres, Adam Smasher, and even Johnny Silverhand, kinda sorta, if you count him in this situation. But there is one that is really easy to overlook. Someone more organic than Borg and someone who's definitely got a lot of stories to tell. Rather than live a potentially short life of fame and fortune, with a notorious legacy of posthumous myths, Victor Vector chose the quiet life. It's why he is still alive and kicking by 2077, but make no mistake, Vic is certainly not weak, even if he never charges into battle at our side or against us. If anything, I think that Vic is one of the strongest characters we meet in Cyberpunk 2077. But Vic's story goes to show that even as a moral person, even as someone who may intend to do more good than bad, and even as someone who lives that quiet life, the entropy of Night City will always win. Before his career as a successful Ripper Doc, Vic was a well-known heavyweight boxer. Enough of one that people still remember the achievements of Victor Vector in the ring. In 2077, most of those who are worth their salt are chipped to the nines. But Vic comes from the days where cyberware was half as prominent. Keep this in mind whenever you talk to Vic or read those threats that he makes to the scavs in those emails. Vic does not make empty threats. Vic fought his way to the Watson Grand Prix and came in second, but ultimately decided that a life of fame and fortune and potential disaster, as things tend to go in Night City, was not for him. The risk was not worth the reward. Vic chose what he called the quiet life, working as a ripper doc in his own quiet clinic. Over the years, he did build up a really good rep and a good string of clients through fixers and mercenaries. By the time V and Jackie are on the scene, Vic is considered one of the best ripper docs, not only for his skill, but also for his care of his clients. For that reason alone, he is a standout in his profession, who doesn't even try to cash in on his glory days. According to his codex, Vic would prefer it if nobody mentioned it at all. In his earlier days as a competitive boxer in a place like Night City, he has almost certainly seen murder, brutality, and manipulation in every way. If Vic wanted to be nasty, he could be nasty. To expand on the subject of the scav emails that you can find in the intro mission, where you rescue Sandra Dorset, you can see the scavs making threats to Vic. Vic hits back, warning that any scavs who try to come to his clinic will get more than a split jaw. Vic tells them too, and I quote, Try me, motherfuckers! The scavs never reply, and this could be because we, you know, we take them out. But somehow I think that they were going to leave Vic alone at this point. Keep in mind Vic's skill level and his strength despite his lack of implants and also his age, and he is still able to be intimidating. Knowing that Vic knows how to be mean hints at some stuff he may have experienced and or done in his past, which is one reason why it is so precious that we get to see the good side of Victor Vector. And nowhere else do we see this as well as we do through the eyes of Jackie, V, and Misty. Perhaps Jackie met Vic through Vic's work as a ripper doc, but what truly cemented the bond between these two is boxing. After Vic stepped out of the ring himself, he still wanted to stay in the sport, and so he became a trainer and a coach. He still loved his old game, and you can tell by all the trophies and memorabilia he still keeps in his shop. And in his own words, Jackie Wells is one of the best fighters he has ever trained. Jackie's father used to beat him and his mother in Jackie's childhood, until one day Jackie fought back, hard enough that he put his father in the hospital. There's a part of me that has this notion that Jackie went to Vic and learned how to fight, which is what led to Jackie being able to defend himself and his mom. Maybe Jackie started training after his dad left, and maybe I'm completely wrong, but it is absolutely something that I think Vic would 
very much so want to help Jackie with, short of going and dealing with it himself. I like to think it's the first one. It would certainly explain why Jackie and Vic are so close. Vic later brings a pair of boxing gloves to Jackie's ofrenda, talking about how Jackie was the first person he ever trained to knock him out with one punch. Vic sits at the bar, drinking with Pepe and mourning the loss of this good person. I'm sure a part of Vic blames himself. Maybe for not warning Jackie more about Dex, or for being the Ripper who helped build Jackie to the point that he felt confident enough to get swallowed up by the promise of this job. Vic also rents out his shop space from Misty, and they have a very sweet bond. You can see it in their emails to each other, where Misty apologizes for being late and she sends hugs. And when Vic is operating on V, he calls for her. Misty stands in as almost a spiritual kind of rock, or an emotional rock to other characters in Night City, and I think she is that for Victor. He relies on her in that way. She's not just a landlord to him. It's just extremely sweet to see the bond these two have, because you don't really see wholesome relationships on display throughout Night City. It's understandable, of course, given the nature of this place. So it's very precious when you get to see it. But because of Vic's genuine care and emotion, we can also see the sad irony of Victor's internal struggle with who he is as a person versus the profession that he does in order to survive. Like Doc is for David in Edge Runners, Victor is our main character's main Ripper. Even if you visit other Ripper Docs in 2077, Vic is the one that V is closest to. And also like Doc, Vic displays that internal conflict of his own morals versus what he does for a living. It's just displayed in opposite ways. For Doc, he does his best to separate emotion from patient. He gets his money, and he provides the service. It is a transaction. Sometimes Doc might even marvel at the strength and tolerance of a certain patient, like David, in a way almost dehumanizing them to an experiment or a subject. But from what we see of Doc's final scene, there is a degree of hopelessness that he feels with having built David to death, more or less. And yes, Doc warned David, and David still pushed for it, but Doc also never said no. He just kept going too. When it comes to Vic, Vic compensates for what I think is his guilt, his struggle with accepting the enabling nature of his profession by caring for his patients the way that he does. Vic goes above and beyond in ways that we don't see other Rippers doing. And yes, that includes using anesthetic. From the beginning of V's story, Vic warns V about Dax. Vic is one of the first characters that you meet in this game, and here he is already warning you. Vic might be retired from his rougher days, but he still has an ear to the ground in the world of mercenaries. He knows that Dex is bad news. But still, Vic chips V with some new fancy implants, and even waives the payment for a later date, because he would rather have a late payment than have V die on this job. Despite his own doubts, he still wishes you luck and playfully says that he hopes you remember him when you hit the big leagues. This reveals a complexity to Victor, kind of the chicken or the egg situation. Does the promise of success make you go for the implants, or do the implants make you go for the success? I think it's honestly just both of these ideas circling each other endlessly. But no matter what, there's no denying the confidence that a fresh top-of-the-line implant can give a merc. Just look at V after testing the Kiroshi optics and whatnot. Yes, you could argue that this is a gameplay mechanic meant to kind of immerse you into the wonders of cyberware. It's supposed to be cool, but still, it's a big deal for a young merc like V to have these top-of-the-line implants for their next big gig, and to have their Ripper Docs support. Objects cannot replace raw skill, but it can sure feel like it for a while. And Vic would have to be aware of this, especially as a Ripper who has no doubt seen countless solos run to their deaths after getting a fresh implant, one that they thought would make their careers. I think it's also interesting that Vic himself is not heavily chipped. It calls to mind the saying of not sampling your own supply. And who would know better the dangers of cyberware than the one who installs it? Of course, this could just be his personal preference, 
Maybe his body can't handle it. It's an interesting idea, but I got no proof. The other huge thing that separates Vic from others and displays his internal struggle is how he fights to save V's life. In what flashes we see of these hectic hours in Vic's clinic, he's working desperately to ensure that we survive when most Rippers would have ditched V and dubbed them a lost cause. You can imagine how long this surgery took and how many people and prophets Vic may have had to turn away in the time it took to save V. But because Vic genuinely cares, combined with the guilt of losing so many other solos that he was probably friendly with, especially Jackie. And I think this is compounded by Misty's presence with him at this time. Misty, who has just lost her boyfriend and is mourning his death. The last thing that she needs is one more death of a friend to make this situation even more horrible. And while yes, V's surgery is a success, you can see how devastated Victor is when he has to tell V that there's nothing he can do to stop Johnny's rewriting of V's brain. It's like Vic feels responsible for his own lack of experience and his own lack of skill in this regard. Which is so sad because Vic did more than 99% of other people in Night City ever would have. I believe that Vic is aware of his role in this violent cycle of Night City, but he still refuses to surrender who he is as a person and the morals that he holds to the sheer reality of it. And this is a good and bad thing. As yes, he is still a key enabler in this destructive system. And I think it's a struggle for him to admit that because of the values that he holds. So he hides that truth behind the idea that he can still do good in an otherwise grisly profession. The good that he can do can outweigh the bad. But Vic does genuinely want to save lives and he wants to do good and he does it where he can. He pays his respects to and acknowledges good people. There's a sort of pain in observing Vic's good heart and the root of it comes from knowing the brutal ecosystem of the environment he survives in. It's acknowledging how busted and incongruous this system is in this city, with the kinder human virtues and values we are taught to strive for each day, but we also do not see reflected in our own system, even in the real world. And I think for me, that's one reason why Victor Vector is such a such a character I can sympathize with. After V's surgery and period of rest, Vic is still there to offer his services to us. When you pay off Vic's debt, he tries to say no and tries to insist that you keep the money. But V insists that no Vic, you get your money and he does accept it, as he should. There is no other character that I can think of in Night City that I have met that is like that. And there's also the quest, Beat on the Brat, where V participates in their own street fighting tournaments, leading all the way to the final fight at the Grand Imperial Mall. Victor is here to support V and to be their coach. He helps us win the fight by telling us some of Razor Hugh's weaknesses. And when we win, Vic is very proud. But he also knows if we throw that fight, and he calls V out on it. Vic calls things like he sees them when it comes to boxing, even if that's something that he struggles with in his Ripper Doc profession. Again, that Night City pattern of willful blindness in order to survive. As a total other note, part of me can't help but wonder Vic's annoyance at V throwing this fight connects to his own second place win in the Watson Grand Prix. Maybe Vic threw the fight there and that's why he didn't win. Maybe he looks back on that and regrets it. Maybe that's one reason why he left the sport like he did, because of the corruption. Maybe that's why he's like, God damn it, V, why? After Jackie's death and all of the regrets Vic likely has about not being able to save him and not being able to save V from the relic, Vic resolves to be there. But the fact that Vic's friendship and dedication to V is also based on the immense guilt he feels for his role as a ripper doc and the system that consumed them definitely permeates this bond. It's just another sad thing about Vic, or at least that's how I view it. And this all hits home with the cruel realities presented in the Phantom Liberty ending.
The Phantom Liberty ending is a polarizing one, and it is bittersweet. And that is also why it is my favorite ending of the game. I deeply appreciate it for the cruel reality that it displays. It sheds a new light on Night City, as well as the sadness of the quiet life in Night City. Early on, Dexter Deshawn goes from knocking the quiet life to cozying right up to it because he just wants to survive. But Dex's viewing of it as just a place to scurry to when things get tough shows his complete misunderstanding of it. I find Vic to be a very good character to contrast with Dex in this regard. Vic chose long ago to accept the quiet life. And one thing you need to recognize is the strength that it takes to choose that life. Especially after climbing the ladder of fame and fortune, like Vic did. Vic could have been a boxing champion, and who knows where his life could have taken him. But there's also the possibility that it would have gotten him in deep trouble, considering Night City's cutthroat environment. Vic had to resist the allure of the promise of Night City legend. Humans have ambition built into them, and it is hard to resist it even when we know pursuing it is not always the best idea. But Vic did resist, and that is a strong example of the kind of guy that he is. But like every story in Night City, there is no beating the setting that is very much a present character in this universe. In the Phantom Liberty ending, after V has been missing for approximately two years, when you go to see Vic again, he comes off as sort of desperate. And yes, he's super relieved to see you again. And hey, I don't know anybody who wouldn't be happy to see Victor Vector again. But he just seems so tired. He's lost Misty, his rock. That anchor of the soul that she sort of is to a lot of people. After Zeta Tech bought him out. Vic is all alone and he is falling apart from the inside. The quiet life is not necessarily a happy ending. Vic is now a reluctant servant to corporate greed. And it's because of how unfair and unforgiving life in Night City is. There's no happy endings there. Jackie is long gone and Misty has decided to leave this city before it can consume her. In the way that it is now consuming Vic. V is a lifeline for him. And that personal want to do more good than bad. That he wishes he could truly hold himself to. And I can only hope that this emergence of a reminder of his past proves one that can truly change Victor's life for the better. Few Ripper Docs in this story allow their emotions to interfere with their profession, at least on the surface. It's understandable because you gotta make money to survive, especially in Night City. This analysis is not intended to berate Vic or attach blame to him, but to discuss the guilt that he burdens himself with. Victor Vector is one of those rippers that cannot fully rein in his feelings. And you can see how that affects him. That is one reason why I love seeing Vic as a coach in Beat on the Brat. It's not as profitable, which explains why Vic works as a doc, but seeing how he lights up when he's around his old sport, you can see what he'd rather be doing, what he'd rather be involved with. As a coach, you help nurture others and you pass on your skills. If any of what I like to think about Vic and Jackie's relationship is true, with Vic helping Jackie learn how to defend himself and his mom. That would be one of the best outcomes in the world to know that what you have passed on to someone brought safety and a period of freedom and happiness for someone else. To know that your skill has passed on something uncontestably good for somebody else. That's something that I think he finds lacking as a Ripper Doc. I only hope that someday, Maybe when he's able to rise up from being underneath the corporate yoke, Victor can finally be free and pursue that passion once again. I think in Night City, if I had to pick anybody who I hope gets a wonderful, peaceful ending, it is Vic. Thank you so, so much for watching, guys. I really, really appreciate it. Vic is such a sweet character and I love him. He reminds me of my dad. It's just how nice they are. I don't know. It's just. I love Vic. I love Vic's story, even if it is kind of subtle, because it just goes to show that Night City truly always wins. You either stay and suffer or you leave. 
And I really hope that once Vic gets to San Francisco and the Phantom Liberty ending, that he finds a degree of peace and happiness that can start him on that path of finding fulfillment. Thank you so, so much to my members. Your support is fantastic. I seriously really appreciate it, guys. A huge thank you to Mika. Lock proposals, big day out. Hell yeah. <laughs> the Meat Coolerest, 001. Hot Dog Man, there he is. Pater Tot, Frankie. Aiden Papoor, Benjamin Scoville. Hello again, Halcyon. Ghost Zero, hell yes. How are you doing today? <laughs> D Factor, Ernst Schloss. I really hope I'm saying your name right. <laughs> Jester's Jinx, thank you, and David Smith. Oh, David, thank you very, very much. And of course, thank you to every single one of you who watches this video, who comments or likes, it helps me out a lot. And another thank you to everybody who has purchased a book. There's been quite a few of you this week. This is my book, Kaisaria Book One. I am a independently published author. It's my first book. It was designed by my sister and written by me, and it genuinely means a lot. Whenever somebody buys a book, I do a little squeal of joy, so thank you very much. All proceeds that I get go back into this channel and maintaining it, so thank you. Thank you so, so much to everybody. I will link it in the description if anybody's interested. <laughs> thank you, guys. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I will see you again in the next one. Goodbye!